There's another area in the security report I wanted to highlight because it's one of the most fascinating ones to me. I mentioned before botnets are a huge way that criminals attack and try to maximize their profits. It's really nice when you have a near zero cost of doing business because you're using other people's servers, other people's computers, other people's internet connections. But even though criminals continue to use that, there have been a tremendous amount of work in the security community, Cisco's sender base, a lot of technologies to make it much harder for criminals to be successful with botnets. One of the things that we highlight in this report then is a technique we call reputation hijacking. This is criminals ceasing to use their botnets to commit the crimes directly, but rather using the botnets, those infected computers, to attack intermediary servers and then have those intermediary servers attack the victim so that the victim can't actually see the reputation of the original botnet that was behind it. Now one of the reasons this is so fascinating for me is that I have a good friend who's actually a professor of education. And strangely enough, he sent me and all 150 of his other friends an email message the other day and it told me that I needed to log on to a Chinese website to check out all the latest deals in audiovisual equipment. I contacted him right away, explained to him that I was pretty sure his free webmail account had been reputation hijacked. And sure enough, he told me that he had a very weak password on his webmail account. What the criminals have done as a great illustration of reputation hijacking is they've said, we're going to use our bots to go try to log in to a huge number of free webmail accounts. And if we find an account that has a weak password, we can then log into it and basically create a ton of email messages, send them to everyone in that address book, and the free webmail provider will actually deliver these messages for us, and the recipient will think it came from the ISP rather than our botnets that originated it. A great way for them to repurpose their botnets so that even if we're blocking them at the mail layer, they can get through via hijacking the reputation of an ISP, and I'm afraid that my friend, the professor of education, will not be the last one of my acquaintances to be victimized by this. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in for the 2008 report, reputation hijacking, we've got a lot of great details and a lot of great stats on that. Thanks.